Hi there friends, this is Riley Kilo and it has been 210 days since I had my orchiectomy and I'd like to talk to you about how I'm feeling and just kind of give you an update. So here we go. So basically it has been quite the journey. Uh, as you know, I had a hematoma, which was a complication from the surgery and it created like a softball sized bruise in my scrotum and that, that bruise has been going down and down and down and now for the last couple months, it seems like it's almost at a standstill, like it gets worse and then gets better and worse and better depending on my activity. And, um, you know, I'm a sex worker, so I was planning on being out of work for about a month or two. It's now been seven months and I have been doing really minimal stuff online and some in-person stuff and just really trying my best to manage with this kind of disability and not being able to perform like I used to and so I was really hoping to be able to be healed and being able to enjoy myself down there um, and it's still not at that part point yet there's still significant bruising there's still significant pain and while the visible bruising is gone you can still see you know there's still signs of bruising and discoloration and stuff and so I'm really having a tough time um, from a mental health perspective I am shattered Honestly, I'm just, I, I've had to live with chronic stomach pain for a very long time. Um, and this has just added kind of another layer of pain and misery without the relief that things like wearing diapers or having sex or, or expressing myself sexually, um, or, or just in general being erotic or being touched down there and stuff, um, is, uh, it's added a lot of extra pain to my life and I just can barely take it. I can barely take it. And I'm a survivor and I'm doing okay. Um, but with a lot of other things that's been going on in my life, um, I have been exhausted. And when I get exhausted, the bad thoughts come and the darkness comes and, and the, I've always had very intrusive thoughts my whole life. I don't like heights because I'm always afraid I'm going to jump, you know, that kind of intrusive thought mindset where I really try to keep control of those things and keep my mind like a steel trap and stuff because um, when I get tired, those intrusive thoughts become louder and louder and louder. And so I'm doing okay. I'm not at risk of self-harming, thankfully, because I have people in my life that are really important to me. And, um, but I'm doing, I'm, I'm having a rough time. And, um, but with that said, I'm, I have a safe place where I live. I have somebody I, I, I love that I'm, I see every day and I have other people in my life, um, that I, I love too. I'm a polyamorous person. So I, and my love spreads around to my friends and, and, and I have partners that mean a lot to me. Um, and, um, but you know, I've been spending a lot of time, um, traveling. I've been spending a lot of time working, um, trying to kind of make up for, not being able to film and stuff. A lot of my sites, I used to be like in the top 20 on many vids and now I'm in not even in the top 100. Um, and, uh, so the things like that are heartbreaking because I was really hoping to keep up with this stuff. And, um, when you are so uncomfortable with your body and when your body is so kind of visibly unappealing because of the bruising and stuff like that. Um, it's tough to maintain your status in an in industry that is so aesthetically driven. Um, I'm doing okay in the sense that I have things in my life that are, have progress to them. I have a career that fascinates me still. I have, um, art, artistic endeavors and people who appreciate my artistic endeavors. And so, um, again, I have a safe space for myself and for my stuffed animals and um, I have contact with my family and I have I have not pushed away all my friends and stuff um, even though I, I must say online I've been very self-destructive in in kind of letting the hurt and abuse that I see online kind of you know uh, affect me and really kind of make me share that with other people online and and um, thinking that I'm doing the right thing but in fact all I'm doing is hurting myself and others um, when I, I should just be more thoughtful about how and when I express matters of importance like advocacy. And so, um, anyway, I'm trying to be really self-aware and I'm really trying to stay away from the bad thoughts 
and stuff. Um, I, again, I'm, I'm not at risk of self-harming because I have these things in my life that help me and, and, um, people that watch out for me and things that bring me joy, even though, you know, I have this PlayStation and I just got this new monitor and it made me happy and stuff, but I just can't find any interest in my video games and stuff right now. And that becomes really difficult when, and that's such a sign of depression is that I just can't be happy. I just can't enjoy the things that I usually enjoy or do the things that I usually do. Um, and in that case, I just have to push I have to listen to music and try to get myself put on my favorite songs and try to get myself engaged and um, find time to calm down and get off social media and um, not put negative things into my head and just kind of take time to rest and step away from it all. And um, Yeah, so I've been doing okay, but I, I'm, I'm scared. I'm very scared that this is never going to heal, and that hurts a lot. Um, I don't want to say that I regret this surgery because I am very happy with a lot of the other things that are going on. But, um, you know, I always think about that statistic that people go, well, only like 5% of people who regret sexual reassignment surgery, you know, who get it, regret it and stuff. And I regret it. I mean, I, I, because I wish this would have never happened to me. And, um, if I would have, I knew that this was a possibility of it happening, but I figured if it did happen, it would heal and, and it's not healing and thinking that I'm going to be able to, I'm not going to be able to live the rest of my life without doing things that I love, like expressing myself sexually or, um, wearing diapers and things like that. Uh, that's really scary. And to think that I did it to myself is even scarier. Um, and so I'm, you know, I'm scared. And so I'm, I'm going to talk to my, my primary care person and see if I can't look at some other urologists because I have talked to a different urologist but they didn't have a lot of experience with this and so I'm going to try to find one that's had experience with transgender orchiectomies and see if I can't maybe at least find some sort of pain management thing or, or do some better work on myself that maybe someday this will heal and maybe it'll just take time and stuff but it it really feels like it's been at a standstill so I'm okay. Um, I just filmed a bunch of really positive stuff that's, I'm going on my other website that's really smiley and everything, so I really am doing okay. I'm going to spend the rest of the night um, making good food and watching funny TV shows with my partner, and um, then I'm going to play some PGA 2K23 and do some golfing and stuff. I've been really enjoying golfing and um, just try to stay positive and try to not not, uh, you know, <clears throat> my mom just started chemo and other people in my life are going through a lot of health problems and, and I don't want to say I'm not going to think about them, but I need to not obsess about them and I need to just do what I can to help them and be present for them. And the, the best thing I can do for them is not be a complete depressed mess for them. I, it's to be strong and to be, um, present and stuff and not be, be this sad mess that can't hardly communicate or, or anything. Um, it was afraid to pick up their phone and stuff. Um, the one thing I keep coming back to that I'm so proud of is that I haven't drank or smoked. I haven't smoked cigarettes or drank alcohol, which were two things that we just messes with my, me and stuff and it, it does hurt my body. Um, but not in the way cigarettes and alcohol did cigarettes and alcohol was very much a, a, a path to, to destruction and where weed is more just like a stop gap while I recover and go through really hard times and stuff. But so anyway, I'm talking too much. Thank you so much for watching. I'll come back soon and let you know how I'm doing, um, with some smiley, cute, fun stuff. And, um, but right now I don't, my friends keep saying that you, you don't have to put on a smile. It's okay to be sad and stuff. And and so I'm sad. I'm very sad. I'm a very sad girl. And I've been crying a lot. And, and luckily there's people in my life like Luna and my partner and stuff that, that um, bring me so much love and joy and brighten my days and stuff. Uh, 
And I know that someday they'll be gone too, and and I'll have to find other things that brighten my my day and and stuff um, like you all and everything and and just the sunbeams and a good book and and things like that. And so, um, thank you for listening and thanks for sticking with me. This has been a nightmare, and I feel like I'm 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 sticking through it and I'm surviving because that's all I can do. Um, but I. I'm really having having tough times and stuff and so um send me some money or something like that I don't know I don't I I money isn't the big problem but it's a big problem in my life it's not the number one problem in my life but it's something that I'm anticipating there's going to be issues coming up because I didn't think I was going to be out of work for so long and um happy thoughts more stuff soon big hugs friends lots of love and thanks for everybody who's been cheering me on and Sending kind comments and everything. Bye.